Hi, I'm Reagan Tunstall from Tunstall's Teaching Tidbits. Thanks for joining me for our Wednesday video. Today, we're gonna to talk about the math mini lesson. We're going to be talking about what we wanna cover in a guided math mini lesson, and how does that compare to the traditional math lesson in, outside of guided math. We're also gonna talk about how the math mini lesson is different from what I'm teaching in my small groups. So, in order to do that, we are going to be using fifth grade guided math. We're gonna be working out of unit three, which is division. And this is going to all come out of our ETA Hand to Mind guided math kit for fifth grade, unit three. Um, I also am excited to share that tonight I'm going to be uploading fifth grade as well on Teachers Pay Teachers. So you'll be able to find it on Teachers Pay Teachers as well as on ETA Hand to Mind. So let's get started. All right, so we're gonna first talk about the math mini lesson inside of the guided math structure. A math mini lesson is a time where I pull my class together in a whole group setting and I want to cover certain components before I meet with them in small group. The math mini lesson is most effective when I am beginning a new concept, when I need to pull my kids together whole group and explain and introduce something and connect it to our prior learning. Once I do that, I am then ready to pull them into the small group where I can actually get into the nitty gritty numbers and their unique developmental needs. Now how that's different from a traditional math whole group lesson is that in a traditional lesson, my class is all seated in one big long drawn out math lesson where I am going to impart all of my wisdom and I'm going to aim at like the middle high level. Now we know that our classes consist of students working anywhere from two to three years ahead to two to three years behind and then everyone else all in between those levels. So that traditional math lesson where I'm teaching and imparting this wisdom, then we're doing guided practice, then we're doing independent practice, that is now not as effective as pulling kids into a mini lesson, introducing and giving them that conceptual understanding, that background knowledge, before then meeting with them in individualized homogeneous groups where they can do the math exploration in a risk-free learning environment that's suited to their true needs, whether that's through a range of numbers that I'm using or the type of supported delivery that we're doing. So. What I'm gonna do is model this mini lesson today and show you how to cover the components that we wanna cover in our math mini lesson for guided math. So, like I said, we're gonna be working with division. We're gonna be working out of unit three. Now, um, in a previous video, I shared that we wanna start with a math warm up before we move into a math mini lesson. So be sure to check that out if you missed it it's because I want you to know what to do in a math mini lesson. And now I'm gonna jump into lesson two. The reason I'm not showing you lesson one is because lesson one is gonna be your pre-assessment for the unit. And what that's gonna do is help you to target the needs of your kids and have them in the correct grouping. All right, so unit three, lesson two for guided math, we start with our essential question our lesson objective, and then this box here is our math mini lesson. It's gonna take up about 25% of our math block. Underneath the mini lesson, we have our discussion questions and our materials. So, and the materials are found in the kit. So let's get started here. Our essential question today is how can students use patterns they know to solve unfamiliar problems? And our objective is students will use patterns to find quotients of up to four digit numbers divided by a one digit number. So, remember that in our whole group lesson, we wanna stay conceptual. 
Conceptual understanding in math just means what is actually happening behind the algorithm that I use to problem solve. And as you know, division is a very um, abstract concept. So before I go straight to that, I'm gonna fill in as much information as I can and relate it to what my students have already learned this year and in previous years so that they have the best chance of success. But not only that, that they can think critically, that they can know if their answer even makes sense to what the problem was asking them, and that they can communicate their understanding of how division really works and how it relates to multiplication. So that is my goal for this mini lesson. So we're gonna begin with a very simple problem. I'm going to show them eight divided by two, and I, I would not show them any of these other problems that we will be getting to, um, but for this video, it just makes it easier to have it nice and little. Um, so we're gonna start with eight divided by two, and I'm really just introducing division and explaining that division is a way that we can take a larger number and break it into equal groups of, by a smaller number. So we're gonna talk about how that relates to multiplication as well. And then we're gonna get started. So our first problem is eight divided by two. And I'm gonna use snap cubes just as a conceptual model of eight and breaking that into two equal groups. So we'll talk through that and we will discover that we can break eight into two equal groups. And those equal groups consist of four. So we'll say, when we go to write our answer in a division problem, we then want to check it with multiplication. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. So therefore, we have the correct answer. And we can see that with our conceptual model. Two groups of 4 makes 8. So now we're going to move down by the power of 10. And what we're going to do is divide 80 by 2. So we're going to use a different manipulative to represent 80, and then we're still looking for two equal groups. So what we're going to use for 80 is our base 10 blocks. So we talked about how these are representations of the value of 10, and we have 8 of them. So if we counted by 10s 8 times, we would get to 80. Now, our problem is asking us, to divide 80 into two equal groups. So, the students will all be telling me their wisdom on this, and we will break these eight rods into two groups, four and four, and so we know that four tens is 40, so I have 40 and 40. We're gonna talk about how that pattern is similar to this pattern where I had four and four. Four and four, and now I have 40 and 40. So when I go to write that down, I have to check my math. I have 80 divided by 2 is 40. 2 times 40 is 80. Yes, we got it right. So now we're going to move down by the power of 10. 800 divided by 2. So I'm going to use flats for my hundreds, and I have 8 of them, so this makes 800. And if I'm dividing 800 into two equal groups, then I'm going to do 400 and 400. And we want to show students that we do want to truly check those and make sure that they are equal groups. So I have 400 and 400 is two equal groups. And we write that down and we'll check our math. 800 divided by two is 400 because two times 400 gives me 800. And we could count that out as we check our math. You're gonna go as far in as your students need you to. Of course, I'm giving you the Cliff Notes version of this because you already know this. So I just wanna show you how to keep that conceptual and what to really talk about. Next, we're gonna move by the power of 10. So we're gonna do 8,000 divided by two and you would have eight 1,000 blocks where you would then again divide that into four groups, I'm sorry, into two groups of four, which would give you 4,000. So I'm gonna write that down and we're gonna check it. Oh goodness. So 8,000 divided by two is 4,000 because 
2 times 4,000 gives me 8,000. Now, I would also be showing students other ways to write that. And then I'm going to assess at this point how my students are doing with this. How um, confident do they seem? Are they able to express these um, concepts back to me? Do they feel comfortable in that? And I'm going to gauge that knowing my students, and you would do that knowing your students. So then, if needed, I'm going to show them a similar but different um, way to work down by the power of 10 because I want them to be exposed again and to be comfortable. If they're just getting their feet wet on this and they're really still um, floundering, this is going to help them to solidify it a little more. So I'm going to start with the number 12 and this time we're going to make four equal groups. So just like we did before, we're going to begin with the snap cubes and I'm going to have 12 of them. We're going to talk about how we want to use multiplication to help us to break 12 into now not two groups but four. So we will talk about, well, what can we multiply four by to get to 12? So we know that four times three is 12 and these really want to break in a different way. So trying to be careful here. So what we would do, and we could break it up different ways just to show them like, oops, my thinking was incorrect if we have incorrect thinking there. So then we say we have four equal groups of three that comprises the number 12. So the number 12 is comprised of. Anyway, so I'm going to check my math. So I'm going to say 12 divided by 4 is 3 because 4 times 3 equals 12. Now we move down by the power of 10, and of course your students who really latch onto this are already going to know, but we still want to bring them through this process. So we're going to move to 120, so I'm going to, to get 12 tens to make that 120. <laughs> Drop my pen. And same thing, we need four equal groups. So we can count them out and work just using the pattern that we know in 12 divided by 4 to do 120 divided by 4. So we're going to focus on using that same pattern, relating it to multiplication all the way through. So then we would continue on down to um, using the flats in the hundreds and going into the thousands. So that is how you keep it conceptual and introductory, introductory but also connect it to the learning that the students already have, which is multiplication. Now, I do want to share how this is going to flow into small group, even though next week's video is going to just focus on small groups, so you'll get a little more detail there. Um, but in the kit and on the lesson plan, as you move from your mini lesson up here down to your small group instruction here, the um, lesson plan tells you to look for the materials that your students will be using in small group. So, when you're doing your mini lesson, many times you are doing a lot of the modeling and explaining and you're pulling them along and having them express that with you. But when it comes to that small group lesson, you will then model and step back and facilitate. So your students will become the center of the learning. They are the mathematicians. Sorry, I'm getting a phone call. Okay, and I'm back. So your students are going to be at the center of the learning as the mathematicians, and they are going to be working through similar division problems to what you were working on. Sorry about my phone. Um, so you can also decide, you know, which groups need a more, um, the more simple version and which ones are ready, which students are ready to work through more difficult problems. But as you can see, these are all um, going to be relating to multiplication and using that power of 10. So just what you have been explaining in your whole group is what they will then practice in small group, but at a level that is right for them. So, I hope this was helpful in explaining the math mini lesson and also just sharing a little bit about the fifth grade guided math. So, 
I will come to you next Wednesday with more on small group instruction and we will choose a different grade level for that as well. Have a great night. Thank you.